Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. I'm the Serious Strategy Gamer, and we're returning to Rule the Waves 2, where we've just uh, been declared war on by the United Kingdom. So we are playing as the US. The United Kingdom in 1923 has declared war on us, and you can see that they have moved enormous amounts of troops, uh, or ships actually, to the Caribbean. They do have three battleships, two battle cruisers, a light cruiser and nine destroyers down here so very substantial forces down here in the Caribbean by them we are trying to reply to that by sending out five battleships a couple of destroyers a couple of light cruisers I hope yes uh, down there as well uh, I don't think we'll be well we might actually be sending our battle cruisers do we want to do that they have decent armor they don't really have the best guns though so I don't think we'll be sending those. Uh, we'll be just sending the battleships and hope to to make some impression in that regard. Um, in between episodes, I did go ahead and rename a couple of our light cruisers that are under construction. They'll take more than uh, a year to, to finish, uh, but they're now all called uh, something with CL. So Cleveland is the lead ship of the class, and then we've got Clarksville, Clearwater, Clovis, and Clinton. So all of these uh, will hopefully finish in... Well, maybe they're probably not going to finish in time for the war. Uh, but yeah, we'll be building those nonetheless. And over here, uh, I did just reorder these things so that the most modern ships should be on top. And I realized the game has put that back to the normal order, so yeah, we'll just see. Um, well, actually, I don't quite like it this way, so I actually prefer this way if the newest ships are on top. So in each category, we have the battleships, we have the battle cruisers. Heavy cruisers, light cruisers, and so on. Uh, let's take a second here to view the almanac, so uh, the summary of all of the ships uh, that we have. So we are in war against the British. Uh, we are the US. We have 11 battleships, so do they. Ours are a little bit, uh, sorry, are a little bit um, bigger. Our tonnage is slightly higher. On the other hand, they do have more battle cruisers. Six more battle cruisers and twice our tonnage, so... Yeah, there's a very big gap there. We do have a light cruiser, which uh, they don't have, but they are building one. Uh, they still have a battleship in service. They don't have any battle uh, heavy cruisers. In terms of light cruisers, they are a little bit ahead. Tonnage and destroyers is pretty much matched. We do have a lot more uh, corvettes, but that's pretty meaningless, I think, normally. So yeah, actually, actually they, they exceed our budget so they are seem to be a little bit stronger uh, let's see what their main ships are I do think we we don't see where they are their battleships are pretty slow I have to say speed 18 that's that's pretty bad on the other hand their battle cruisers are extremely fast they have 15 inch guns so the revenge clause is their latest edition 8 15 inch guns and 13 and a half 13 and a half tons of uh, uh, inches of armor is, is very high. We don't quite have that. We do have more guns though, and we are considerably faster. Well, let's see. Let's see whether we do get into a big battle in the Caribbean as we are moving in our forces in the next turn. Enemy fleets dominate these fleets around Haiti. That's unfortunate. British troops have invaded our position in Guantanamo Bay already. Really, just because one turn. That's, 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 that's hard. Our submarine ha S9 has repeated and sunk the last remaining British pre dreadnought pre battleship, the Camperton. That's very good force, of course. Submarine warfare summary over here. Friendly merchant sunk four. Enemy submarine sunk one. We have sunk more than them. Well, not a big change over here, really. And we do get into the battleship engagement. Battle in support of land combat around Guantanamo Bay. The enemy is Great Britain. It's ex it's expected to be a large battle. They ex uh, apparently only have two battleships over here, so let's see. They decline the battle, that's unfortunate. And we do get into a convoy defense over here, where we only have one light cruiser, whereas they do have two, but declining would be fairly expensive. So this is not the battle that we would have chosen, but it is what it is. So, uh, let's see the status over here. We are battling around over here. You can see the night, day, day, night cycle is uh, over here. So we are in a night battle and it's not going to change for a short time. We do only have one ship, the CL Cincinnati, which does include eight six inch guns. Not the worst ship that we have. I think this probably is going to be okay. We don't have any secondary guns and we do have some 
uh, torpedo tubes. So yeah, let's see. Uh, the game will lock us. The we know the convoy division is somewhere over here, but we can't quite see it. Uh, let's have a look at the main gun range, which would be over here, and the sighting range. So you can see it's going to be a knife fight, I think. Uh, we are also going to view a large inset over here so that we have a view of our ship as a zoomed in state all of the time. And I think that's okay. Torpedo range is also very much substantially higher than our visual range. So yeah, that's simply, simply something that we have to consider. There we go. Uh, I just advanced time by a minute and we've uh, identified an, uh, or seen an unidentified ship over here. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go to the maximum speed that the Cincinnati has because this is very, very likely to be an enemy. And we're going to play this uh, minute by minute simply because this is our first real battle. So we don't quite know where it's going. Um, can we actually have a look at the gameplay settings? Flotation, yeah, 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 yeah. No, actually on capital ships I do want that warning. And open fire, yes I do want all of these messages, please. Uh, but I would also like to just sound in video, is it? Show damage meter, yes, course indications, please. Map scale, side flex, compass, all of that. Thank you. Okay, so this is the compass. You can see this is not a very high... Uh, this is this is very, very close. So this is about, let's say, let's call it 3,000 yards or so. And we're going to move down here. So this is our uh, movement range now. Simply so that we can get all of our guns trained on this unknown ship. So let's advance time by a minute. We have identified it as a light cruiser. And we have identified it as a British light cruiser. So that is no surprise. And you can see all of our guns on this broadside are now trained on this ship. And we're probably very soon going to start firing on these guys. Uh, we should probably go this way simply because they are apparently turning away. There we go. We are opening fire, so this red line is indicating that we are opening fire. The wind is blowing from this direction, so um, if we were to fire in that direction, we'd probably be uh, facing our smoke a little bit. And there we go. Uh, we are firing five six-inch guns, and one of those uh, has scored a hit on this ship, which is fairly nice. But very soon, these guys will be moving out of range, so what we'll probably have to do is actually just follow up directly on these guys and now they are turning again so let's see what's going to happen over here Cincinnati uh, does suffer a turreted so these guys have uh, shot at us again uh, in turn and they have actually hit one of our turrets so the turret over here this one in the back and they've disabled it that's unfortunate so they did hit it on the top one medium hit unfortunate unfortunate now they are turning a little bit, so what we might actually want to do then is turn with them. So turn down here so that we are exposing all of our functioning guns uh, towards them and are increasing the weight of our broadside and I think that's going to be okay. Cincinnati hit again. We are firing at them, we are straddling them. We don't really have that many guns trained on them though. Well right now about four guns. Which is okay, but we're turning further, so hopefully now we are firing with more guns. All of our guns are basically firing with all of uh, the ones that we can that can fire, and we do see more damage over here. So we are suffering a hit from to the extended belt armor, so somewhere around here or here, and we are suffering a hit towards the belt itself. Shell burst limited by coal. Okay, so this is a coal-fired air uh, ship. Well, so far this isn't too great. We are actually suffering, no sorry, this is three hits on them so that's very nice to see uh, and very good for us of course. We in turn have not been hit this turn. We're also firing two torpedoes over here um, and that is interesting because that means they too might be firing torpedoes so let's actually turn a little bit away from them to hopefully uh, avoid any damage over there and maybe these torpedoes are gonna hit that would be great uh, on the other hand we have scored two more hits they have scored two hits against us one against the belt extended one against the deck extended I won't say yeah let's see next turn they are also turning away interesting so they might have spotted um, our torpedoes we can turn in again a little yes very good I think we did 
uh, we did score a hit there with one of our torpedoes and uh, yeah indeed they have been hit by a torpedo and they are immediately sinking so that is very very good to see they only had one light cruiser in the battle over here that did suffer an enormous amount of damage and they sunk they also fail, failed to sink our transport ships so that is very very good to see and we get an enormous bonus actually for uh, for all of our surviving merchant ships uh, on the other hand they have damaged they've scored a little bit of damage um, against our ships so here you can see the detailed breakdown and we should actually see the British Light Cruiser Squadron uh, which was a conquest class it did only have five inch guns but it had a lot more of them and we did immediately destroy one of their turrets completely but yeah the most important thing is they suffered eight medium hits but most importantly the torpedo hit is what really really scored um, yeah what that, that is what doomed them we can see all of the lock entries over here so yeah if we do um, just we won't do go through all of this detail every time but yeah you can see all of uh, the, the very first hit in the very first second over here did uh, score a hit on one of their turrets and that was disabled for the entire time then which is probably why they turned away from us and tried to expose the different side to us but that's that's very nice um, decent result over here so yeah let's leave this scenario we are getting some victory points they are not we are very much ahead I don't think this is a battle worth uh, naming so we're gonna cancel that they are rebuilding a couple of things all in all okay nothing too major over here so yeah we'll just have to keep that in mind on the map then we have seen that they have some forces down here one battleship one light cruiser they have some stuff over here on the west coast just two light cruisers we do now have two battleships over here really which battleships are on the west coast I did not think that we had any ships on the west coast. North American West Coast USA two battleships, really? Which ones? We only have these guys, they in the Caribbean. And these guys that are Oh there we go. Sorry. New Jersey and Wyoming. Okay, so these are well, not the best battleships that we have, or are they? They're yeah, pretty good actually. Why did I send you to the west coast? I think that might have been a mistake. I don't I don't, I don't know what you should be good doing on the west coast. Let's move these ships back to the east coast. Oh, you know what? No, we do need to move them back to the east coast. I think the east coast is way too underrepresented by these old ships. On the other hand, what we might want to do is send the New York classes. Uh, they can go to to the west coast so we're just going to switch over these two two battleships and that's going to be fine have we got sufficient light forces here just three light cruisers a couple of destroyers destroyers is fine over here we do have 16 destroyers five battleships that's okay too and four battleships over here yeah okay so what we really should be doing that and the soviet union is bringing some forces over here okay interesting uh, what I think we should be doing is set an invasion target on New Brunswick. And that's fine. Good. That does cost us some money, but I do think it makes sense to just advance into Canada over here. And that should be okay. Right, and of course we do see a battle down here in the Caribbean. Uh, but I think we will win that if we uh, continue to commit our forces in in much much more strongly than they will be doing that. But look at that! Look at all the amount of forces that the Brits are sending down here to West Africa. I think they'll probably be rejoining uh, this battle line very soon. And what is okay because we will be sending four more battleships into this area just as they are passing on uh, to the various coasts. So basically these guys will all next turn be in the Caribbean, but I do think we probably need some some more light cruisers then. Who have we got on the east coast then? You guys, you're very fast. You're short range, but that's still okay. Let's let's move you towards the Caribbean as well. Just so that we have more forces down there. Short range. Oh yeah, true. But we do have some forces there. Well, okay, still, 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 let's 
Can't see your movement. Okay. Move. Yeah, sometimes the UI really isn't the greatest. Um, so that's okay. Right. Nevertheless, they are going there. Uh, we do have a lot more ships on the East Coast, though. Uh, and I think it does make sense to potentially take you guys, move towards the Caribbean. And we might also want to take the Michigan, our first light cruiser, and move that towards the Caribbean as well, because it would be very, very nice to get that into battle. Let's take the turn. Breakthrough in anti-aircraft. We have improved the heavy AA effectiveness. That's nice to see. Transverse arrestor wires for shipboard aircraft operations. That's also nice. Torpedoed and damaged British battleship. That's good to see. Enemy submarine has sunk one of our uh, corvettes. That's not that's not important. Couple of sh enemy ships sunk. A submarine lost. I don't I don't mind that too much. And here we go. Another battleship engagement battle in support of land combat. So I think this is going to continue to fire. Uh, the enemy doesn't really have that many forces over here, which is great. So we're definitely going to accept that. The Brits, of course, are going to deny that. And we are getting into a cruiser battle again on the west coast. Um, of course, we're going to accept that and see what's going to come out of that. So, yeah, the battle. Um, it, this time it's morning, so we're just out of the night phase. That's good to see. We do have some light cruisers over here. We do have one... Uh, sorry, what, two submarines over there. We do have one light cruiser and a squadron of destroyers. And these are in screening operations compared to the light cruiser which i think is okay uh, the light cruiser itself is six has six inch guns but a very different layout from the last one so they are all on the center line mount a little bit better armor as well so yeah that's nice to see and uh, let's start over here until we get the first sighting report there we go um, and this time yeah our sighting range is actually higher than our gun range. So this here is our gun range and we will need to see what's going to happen over there. Uh, we haven't still haven't identified it yet. Uh, it certainly certainly is um, an enemy. I'm gonna just lock the view over here. It's very certainly an enemy but formally we don't know that so we're not gonna open fire yet. And you know what this is annoying. Right so they are coming into range. Uh, we have identified it as a light cruiser now. We don't know what type of light cruise it is. Uh, so I think what we're going to do is we're going to sail off towards the uh, northeast over here because that means that if they are coming parallel to that course, uh, what would happen is that they would be going, um, that they would be firing basically into the wind. And that might mean that their smoke is blowing over their gun range and that would reduce their vision just a little bit. So let's see whether that will work or whether it's going to give uh, no benefit at all. Right, looks like we have trained one of our gu guns on these guys. Uh, of course, we're going to accelerate to the maximum speed possible. There we go. We are opening fire on them. And I think we have not yet all of our guns trained, just one. Now all of our guns are trained um, on them, which is nice to see. They're coming in very aggressively, I have to say. And our destroyers are just doing a lot of things at the same time. It's an amphibian class, so this time we do know a little bit about them. Uh, for example, we do know that they have a lot, a tremendously lot of guns, uh, which are all 5-inch guns though, and we've actually already disabled uh, one of their guns again. It seems a little bit better armored though than the last ones, and the torpedo tubes are submerged, which also is nice to see, uh, because that does give them less flexibility. Second hit already on them with six inch guns, so that's nice to see. They are now coming in parallel, trying to get a broadside on us, uh, which isn't too surprising actually. And uh, let's keep an eye on our torpedo range as well. We could formally torpedo them, but I don't think that's probably, it's probably not got what's gonna happen. Three hits on them in a single turn, nice. Another hit, near miss, oh well. Oh no, sorry, that's... Have we been hit now? No, we haven't been hit yet. So that's very good. And they have... Yeah, we took com took this uh, out completely, so that's nice to see. Couple of uh, near misses. We are being hit, though. 
There's a near miss and there is a turret uh, destroyed on our side, uh, which of course is not that great. So that is one of the weaknesses of putting all of your uh, turrets on the center line. You don't you don't get the backup of being able to turn around uh, and sending these guys around. I think we are getting a little bit close over here. We might actually want to play to the advantage of our bigger guns a little bit more. Okay, let's let's get on parallel course over here. We should now be able to send a lot of guns their way. And our destroyers are just doing their thing. Yeah, they do have a lot of guns and they are trying to close in. And here's the morning, so vision is going to improve. But they should be fighting a little bit against the smoke, so maybe that's helpful. Ooh! Very bad hits over here. What was that? Four medium hits. And that, I think, just happened now. Yeah, we are launching torpedoes, but we have been hit in two turrets now. So, out of our five turrets, three aren't working. This one is completely destroyed, this one is completely destroyed, and this one is jammed or something. Disabled, destroyed, destroyed. That's a very good hit for them. And on the other hand, their turrets are still in action. They might be suffering a lot more damage on other fronts, but that's pretty drastic. So what we actually might want to tell these guys here is to actually support this guy and your division target is going to be this. Yeah. Let's see whether our destroyers can help out over here. We're being hit further. These guys are very, very good at targeting us. They're turning away now. We've hit them again, and our torpedoes are coming in, but I think they are going to miss. Yeah. That's unfortunate. Okay, so we only have two guns in action. And they still have six, so even though they have worse caliber, I think... I think this is currently a little bit of a losing fight. Uh, some of our torpedoes, uh, some of our destroyers are launching torpedoes there, but this is a little bit high range. Uh, so I don't actually think that that is too useful. So, no, you know what, we are going to send you on manual fire over here. Uh, sorry, on manual control. You've already shot off a couple of your torpedoes, but what we're going to do is send you over this way. Trying to close the range a little and try to launch more torpedoes. You can see we are launching a lot of torpedoes here already. Maybe I shouldn't have turned this time. Did score a nice hit over there uh, because we had already launched a couple of torpedoes so it might not be the best. A couple of, a little bit of gunfire happening this way and that. Now all of our guys are firing their small inch guns uh, on this ship. It's not qu quite working as expected though. Let's keep these guys around. Have you guys got any torpedoes left? Yeah, you actually do. Five torpedoes. And at this range they might find it difficult to maneuver out of range. Ooh, a lot of hits over here. So yeah, just a single hit on this destroyer. Nearly, oh, well, two hits. Very heavy flotation damage. Yeah, so you guy, so that is on automatically split off. We're going to turn you around, of course. Uh, these three guys are still going to continue their path over there, though. And we are hitting them, at least with a couple of things, so that is nice to see. Can you go to max speed? Yeah, more hits there. No hits really from this guy though. And I would really like you to launch torpedoes now. Have you got any torpedoes? Yes, you have got overwater torpedo lines. Okay, Terry has been hit in the engine room. But Amphibian is continuing to take some damage over here. And we are on the right side of them. 
They're down to 10 knots, so really we should be able to to hit them with some torpedoes now. We're taking a lot of damage. Just, just single t hits here uh, on our, our destroyers are already proving catastrophic. Line ahead, that's, that's all right. I don't want you to hold torpedo fire. Can I do manual? I don't think I want manual. Just launch your torpedoes, please. There we go. That was a torpedo hit. Nice. Very good. So we've taken medium damage on one of our light cruisers, uh, two of our destroyers, but their ship has sunk, so that's a, a, a very, very good win force. Total points 10,000 against their 1,000. Very, very nice. I like to see that. Good. Calliope was sunk. Very nice result. Not the most dramatic one, just a light cruiser, but still it's going to give us some victory points and that's all right. Britain is said to have increased naval budget. They are building a couple of coastal factories. They are building some corvettes, that's uh, to be understood. They are refitting ships with heavier guns, interesting to see. Soviet Union has laid down a battleship. Aren't we in... Oh, are we out of the treaty time remaining because we I have entered war? Interesting, we were in, in the uh, Washington Naval Treaty and that seems to have run its course due to this war. Extremely interesting. Very, very good actually because that means we'll soon be able to build some new capital ships. And I think that is very much required because some of our ships are, aren't really that great. Good. Uh, let's keep an eye on these things over here. So we are still trying to invade over here. The uh, Brits still do have a light cruiser in the vicinity of uh, the North American West Coast. And of, of course now all of our battleships are basically in the Caribbean. The British have retreated basically to the Mediterranean, which is okay. They do have some forces around the West Coast. That's okay too. What we might actually want to do is send one of our battle cruisers, maybe the San Diego class, which is horribly outdated towards the west coast because there it would be able to, it, this guy would be, it, it's basically useless against battleships but it definitely can take out light cruisers very easily. I don't think I want to move the Rochesters but you know what, we're going to send both of these San Diego's uh, towards the west coast. There we go. We do have very few ships on the east coast now, except for a couple of corvettes, a couple of destroyers, a couple of light cruisers, really not that much. This Raleigh class, I think it's fine. In about a year we're going to get a couple of further light cruisers. Still quite a while and we are bleeding some, we are bleeding money so let's see about that. And I would like to take Canada. Our invasion planning is going towards New Brunswick, so it should be okay. Let's see what the next turn is going to bring us. The enemy has sounded us about a negotiated peace with us gaining disputed border areas and some of their colonies. The president wants to know your opinion. We can secure even better terms if we crush them completely. A few more months will do. We should not let them off cheaply. We should press for hot terms. I think we're going to go for we can secure even better terms if we crush them completely. But the uh, <laughs> president did not uh, go with our advice. Nevertheless, a beast is concluded with our side gaining large territories and considerable war reparations. So we can now uh, take f uh, basically four value out of them. So it was a very small war over here in total, uh, but does allow us to take some areas. And I think that would be very nice. So which areas do we want to take? We could take areas close to home, such as Newfoundland. And I think that might be a good choice. We could also take Bermuda. I think we'd probably want to go for the areas around our home, home waters first. So I think Newfoundland might be a good choice. Or we could go with Bermuda and a couple of smaller ones, Grand Bahama, Trinidad. No, no, no. Actually, let's go with Newfoundland. We want to clear our home waters here of any enemy presence, so 
that is uh, what's going to happen. The monthly balance is going to go down dramatically. And the Brits uh, do scrap a couple of their ships. Interesting. And a lot of people are laying down new, new battleships and such. Okay, interesting. So yeah, at, at the very least we did gain some territory, not that... Oh, sorry. Yeah, over here, this new pamphlet. Yeah, that's new. Um, and that's good. But yeah, there's still some way to do, uh, especially against the Brits. Right. Our monthly balance is, is really, really bad now, so we'll have to re-establish our ships a little bit. Um, and maybe scrap some ships, maybe think a little bit about our carrier forces and such. Uh, but yeah, definitely put some place into mothball, some some ships into mothball situation or anything like that. Uh, maybe even scrap some of them because these Montana classes, I really don't like them uh, too much. They have only 12 inch guns, 9.5 inch belt armor. They really aren't that great and they are costing us quite a bit of maintenance. So yeah, on the other, they are really no comparison to the Arizona class. Just look at the weight difference. Arizona class is basically twice as heavy. Of course, it's also costing us more more maintenance, uh, but it does have much better guns. Decent speed, all of those actually. Yeah, but the New York classes, so slow, so useless. Yeah. That being said, um, I think this is a very good place to put in a cut. So thank you very much for watching, guys, and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.